Welcome to Robraintix, where we discuss recent research advancements in the field of neuroscience and robotics. And today we've got some really cool papers from the Physical Intelligence Research Group. Really cool stuff. And they're doing some really fascinating things with a new model they call Pi Zero. Yeah, it's um definitely a game changer. I mean, imagine like a robot that can not only like see and understand the world around it, but can learn and adapt to new situations. Wow. With a level of dexterity that like rivals humans. Okay. That's what Pi Zero is all about. You definitely got my attention. Yeah. But let's back up for a second. Okay. What makes this work such a breakthrough? Right. From what I've read, it seems like Pi Zero is built on something called a Vision Language Action Model or VLA. Uh huh. Can you break that down for us a little? Yeah, sure. So you see, traditional robots are often programmed with very specific instructions for very specific tasks. But Pi Zero is different. It's trained on a massive data set of images, text, and robot actions, which allows it to understand both what it sees and like what you tell it to do. Yeah. Okay. So think of it like you've provided Pi Zero with like thousands of hours of robot training data. Oh wow. Giving it this vast understanding of how to interact with the world. So instead of just blindly following a set of pre-programmed instructions, Pi Zero is actually using this VLA to like learn and adapt, kind of like how humans do. Exactly. And a key part of this learning process is something called flow matching. Okay. Now, older robot models often move in a very jerky, almost like robotic way, right? Yeah. But flow matching allows Pi Zero to generate smooth, continuous motions, making its movements much more fluid and natural. So that explains the action part of the VLA. Right. But what about the vision and language aspects? Right. How does Pi Zero actually understand what it's seeing and what we're telling it to do? Well, that's where those pre-trained vision language models come in, or VLMs. Mm. You probably heard of these large language models that are making waves in AI. They're trained on massive amounts of text and code, allowing them to understand and generate human language. Mm -hmm. The researchers behind Pi Zero took these VLMs and combined them with a ton of robot-specific data, mm. actions, sensory information, you know it. So it's like Pi Zero has like a built-in understanding of language thanks to these VLMs. Yeah. And then it uses that understanding to interpret what we're asking it to do. Precisely. And what's even more impressive is that Pi Zero isn't limited to just one type of robot. Oh, really? They use something called cross-embodiment training. Okay. Which means they trained it on data from a variety of different robot platforms. Wow. Google Arm, Dual Arm, Mobile Manipulators, the right. works. So it's like a universal robot brain that can be plugged into different bodies. You got it. That's wild. This cross-embodiment training means that Pi Zero can adapt to different physical forms and learn to control a wide range of robots. And let me tell you, the scale of this training is mind-boggling. We're talking over 10,000 hours of robot data. Wow. Covering 68 different tasks across seven different robot configurations. 10,000 hours. That's like robot boot camp on steroids. It's a lot of data. No wonder this thing is so good. But all this talk about training makes me curious. Yeah. What kinds of tasks can Pi Zero actually perform? We've got to get into specifics here. Right. So Pi Zero has been tested on like a pretty impressive array of tasks. Okay. From relatively simple things like picking and placing objects. Right. To much more complex challenges like folding laundry. Hold on. Folding laundry. <laughs> You're telling me this robot can actually handle the bane of my existence? Yeah. I mean, I struggle with folding fitted sheets, and you're saying this robot can tackle a whole laundry basket. It's true. And it's not just about the folding itself. Okay. Pi Zero has to, like, understand how different fabrics behave. Right. How to manipulate them smoothly and even plan a sequence of folds. Oh, wow. It's a level of dexterity and planning that was previously thought to be beyond the reach of robots you gave us a paper. Yeah. Describing how they tested Pi Zero on a variety of these tasks, and the results are pretty remarkable. Okay, but let's be real. Even with all this fancy training and flow matching, yeah, there have to be some limitations. Yeah. I mean, can we just tell any Pi Zero powered robot to say build a house of cards yeah. or bake a souffle? Not quite. While Pi Zero is incredibly adaptable, okay, it still benefits from fine tuning on specific tasks, right? Especially those that involve a lot of intricate movements or require knowledge that isn't part of its general training data. So, for something like building a house of cards, yeah, you'd probably need to train it on a data set of well, people building houses of cards. So it's not a completely plug-and-play solution. Right. It still needs some specialized training to master truly new and complex skills. Yeah. 
That makes sense. But I'm curious about the pre-training data set itself. Uh -huh. The researchers mentioned being very intentional about what kind of data they fed Pi Zero. Yeah. What exactly went into this robot training buffet? Well, they wanted to make sure Pi Zero had a solid foundation in a wide range of skills. So they combined our own data, which focused on dexterous manipulation tasks, with several large public data sets. Oh, wow. Like AUKSE, DROID, and BRIDGE. And these public data sets added what exactly? They provided a broader range of actions and environments. Okay. For example, there's data on robots grasping and moving objects in different settings, navigating through cluttered spaces, uh -huh. even interacting with humans. So it's like they gave Pi Zero a crash course in right. Robot 101 covering all the basics and then layered on the more specialized stuff. Exactly. It's a really clever approach and it seems to have worked incredibly well. Nice. The research shows that Pi Zero consistently outperforms other models, even those specifically designed for dexterous tasks on a variety of challenging benchmarks. Impressive, but we've been focusing a lot on the physical stuff. Yeah. What about the thinking part? Right. I mean, we've talked about how Pi Zero understands language and visual cues, mm -hmm. but can it really reason about its actions and make intelligent decisions? That's where things get even more fascinating. The researchers explored using something called a high-level policy to guide Pi Zero's decision-making. Okay, now we're getting into the AI brain trust territory. Right. Can you explain what you mean by a high-level policy? Sounds a bit abstract. Think of it like this. You want Pi Zero to bus a table, right? Yep. Now that task involves a bunch of smaller steps, picking up the plate, throwing away the napkin, putting the cup in the dishwasher. Right. The high-level policy is like a manager that breaks down the big task into these smaller subtasks and tells Pi Zero what to focus on. So it's not just about understanding individual actions. It's about being able to sequence those actions in a logical way to achieve a larger goal. Precisely. And what's really cool is that they actually used a separate vision language model, one of those VLMs we talked about earlier, to provide this high-level guidance. Whoa, so it's like a VLM directing another VLM. Yeah. That's next level AI collaboration right there. Yeah. But how does this actually work in practice? Let's stick with our table busing example. Okay. The high level policy guided by the VLM would analyze the scene, understand the goal clearing the table, and then provide Pi Zero with a step-by-step -step plan. Okay. First, pick up the plate, then grab the napkin and toss it in the trash. Next, put the cup in the dishwasher. Ah, so it's giving Pi Zero as a recipe to follow. Exactly. And this hierarchical approach seems to be incredibly effective. The research shows that Pi Zero performs significantly better on these complex multi-step tasks when it has this high-level guidance. It's like having a robot sous chef making sure everything is done in the right order. Well said. It's an exciting time to be in this field. It is. And I'm eager to see what the future holds for Pi Zero and other groundbreaking robotics projects. Me too. And who knows, maybe one day I'll finally have a robot that can fold my fitted sheets. A guy can dream. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned if you want to learn more about interesting research in robotics. 